come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Anybody know he's worthy? David declares, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. You had to make that thing personal. Because somebody don't think it was the Lord that brought them. But David declares, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side. Where would I be today? And so we give God praise for being on our side. Amen. When others have walked away from us, doors have been closed in our face. God has been a very present help in the time of trouble. We do give God praise for the set man of God. Uh, my friend, my brother, Pastor Robert Brooks. Amen. Junior. Amen. And his beautiful help made minister Betty Brooks we get praise for her amen because beside amen every good man is a great woman amen the Bible declares when a man find a wife he find a good thing but it didn't stop there said he obtained favor amen from the Lord amen I thank God for my friendship amen with them amen down through the years thank god for this place that brought us together and then second baptist that kept us together amen and and then as we cultivated friendships with each other i believe it's going on about 10 years amen I, might be more than 10 years of our friendship and and kindred spirits and so we thank god for that we thank god for saint peter's all your leaders amen we thank god for you amen that are, are working with him and and helping him make this ministry what god has envisioned for it to be and so i promise not to be with you too long but i believe there's something that i can say not only to encourage uh my friend and brother your pastor but also to encourage you because if a church is to be great if a pastor is to be great then the people must see the greatness and not want to hinder it but want to be a participant and so we thank God for that I call your prayer for attention we thank God for my wife who was here on Friday night but is not here this morning amen we thank God we are Amen. You know he my friend. He was my best man. Amen. Amen. We give God praise. Amen. I, I was torn. I said, I want you to marry me, but I want you to be my best man. So we thought about he can be my best man, step down, and then officiate mo. So we just said, man, you got to be my best man. <laughs> and we give God praise for that. But if you have your Bibles, I just want to lift up maybe three verses from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17 when you found it just say amen I'm reading from the New King James Version verse 9 said and Moses said to Joshua choose us some men and go out and fight with Amalek tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand so Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek and Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amimelech prevailed. But Moses' hand became heavy so that they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hand, one on one side and the other on the other side and his hands were sturdy unto the going down of the sun so Joshua defeated Amimelech and his people with the edge of the sword I want to tag this text by simply saying encouraging your pastor encouraging your pastor in the Lord Father how we love you we adore you we thank you God for this sacred space in this sanctuary now god we ask you to saturate it with your presence we already feel your presence in this place god we know that praying praising and preaching will be in vain unless you come in and bless it 
So God, we ask you right now to continue to let this sweet communion of your Holy Spirit rest in this place. Take charge of my fell, feeble frame, God. You know where I am this morning. Now, God, allow your people to hear Jesus and not hear James. Allow us, God, to preach not for a response, but rather for results. That your people might be the better because we've been in your presence. Have your way in this place that you get all the glory, that you get all the honor, that you get all the praise. And we say it in that name that's above every name. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. And the people of God said, Amen. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. Amen. Encouraging your man of God. Encouraging your man of God. Brothers and sisters, I, I am a statistic person. And it says, Pastor, today I face with more work, more problems, and more stress than any other time in history. This has taken a frightening toll on the ministry shown by statistics. It says, Pastor, 1,500 pastors leave the ministry each month due to failure, moral failure, spiritual burnout, contention in their churches. 4,000 new churches begin each year, but over 7,000 churches close. 50% of parish pastors' marriages will end in divorce. 80% of pastors and 84% of their spouses feel unqualified and discouraged in their role as pastors. 50% of pastors are so discouraged that they would leave the ministry if they could but have no other way of making a living. 80% of seminary and Bible school graduates who enter in the ministry will leave the ministry within five years. 90% of pastors said their seminary or Bible school training did not prepare them for the mess of ministry. 85% of pastors said their greatest problem is they are sick and tired of dealing with problem people, such as disgruntled elders, deacon, worship leaders, worship team, board members, associate pastor. 90% said that the hardest thing about ministry is dealing with uncooperative people. 70% 70, 70 of pastors feel grossly underpaid. 90% said the ministry was completely different than what they thought it would be before they entered into the ministry. 70% 70, 70 of, of, of felt God called them to pastoral ministry before their ministry began. But after three years of ministry, only 50% still felt called. To make matters work, brothers and sisters, pastors, wives, 80% of pastor's spouses feel their spouse is overworked. 80% of pastor's wives feel left out and unappreciated by the church members. 80% of pastor's spouse wish their spouse would choose another profession. 80% of pastor's wives feel pressured to do things and be something in the church that they're really not. The majority of pastors' wives survey said that the most destructive event that has occurred in their ministry and their family was the day their husband entered ministry. 70% of pastors con consistently fight with depression. Almost 40% polls said that they have and ha even had an extramarital affair. 80% of the adult children of pastors survey have had to seek professional help due to depression. 75% of pastors do not have a close friend or confidant or a mentor. 95% of pastors do not regularly pray with their spouses. 80% of pastors surveyed spend less than 15 minutes a day in prayer. While 70% said the only time they spend time in study in the word of God is when they're preparing their sermon. Brothers and sisters, God, isn't, God didn't intend for ministry to destroy us, but to build us up on our inner man, the spiritual man. That's why you can go on to do greater and greater works for him, yet we have seen today that droves of pastors are leaving the ministry because of defeat, depression, and dejection. 
why is this happening, brothers and sisters? And the question is, what can, what can we do about this? In this pericope today, we find a man by the name of Moses who was given the, the tedious task by uh, going down to Egypt and setting the people of God free. They've been crying by reason of their taskmaster for over 400 years. They've been in bondage, oppression, grueling, mean taskmasters that put the weight and the beast of burden on their back. And God raised up a man, Moses, that goes down to a place where his people were to deliver them. You know, every time at the hand of Moses, when Moses said what God had to say, and when God began to bring about the ten plagues, how the people began to mumble and complain about Moses, saying, now Moses, you've made it worse for us because now Pharaoh is telling us to build bricks without straw. Moses, you're making it worse for us. In, 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 in your attempt for deliverance, you're making it worse uh, for us. And here it is, Moses trying to encourage the people, yet still trying to be faithful to the command of God that's on his life. Moses, he is dealing with a bunch of people that's mumbling and complaining. Brothers and sisters, if you just walk with me, you will understand uh, that this group of people, these church members, uh, uh, Moses, they had a ministry of murmuring and complaining. But they did not have a ministry of encouraging and praising. Isn't that ironic? Isn't ironic, brothers and sisters, that even among us today, there are those who have been deputized to be complainers and murmuring. They will never tell you how good things are, how people are being saved, healed, delivered, and set free. They won't tell you, amen, about children who are coming off of drugs and coming out of gang. They won't tell you about social justice that's going on up in this here in this community. They won't tell you about how many people were saved, baptized, gave their life to Christ, but they are murmuring and they're complaining. They, they have the ministry of complaining and murmuring. And what they do is uh, they always complain about everything. H have you had those murmurs in the church? Amen. If the air condition is broken, it's too hot. When the air condition is fixed, it's too cold. And so it is Moses have these deputized murmurers among him. And when we get to chapter 12, God tells Moses to commemorate and then institute the, uh, the Passover. After the Passover, God calls them in chapter 12 uh, uh, to be led out of Egyptian captivity. They're led out of Egyptian captivity and now uh, they're led, we get to chapter 16, they're now faced at the Red Sea. Uh, look at what these murmurs and these complainers begin to say. They begin to say, Moses, you brought us out here to die. It would have been better for us to have died in Egypt than to come out here and die in the desert. Ain't that ironic that you have a stupidity among you that they've been in the Egyptian bondage for 400 years. God led them out. They're wealthy. They came out with possession. They were broke, busted, and disgusted down in Egypt. They're led out wealthy and now they're saying we're at the Red Sea and Pharaoh chariots are behind us but I wish we would have died in Egypt then for us to come out in the desert. Can you just tell somebody if God brought you out of Egypt he did not expect for you to die in Egypt he surely won't allow you to die at the Red Sea he's at the Red Sea they're now murmuring and they're complaining saying you should have left us in Egypt rather than to bring us out here to die they move on they come to bitter waters water is bitter after traveling uh, for three long days, they are now hungry, they are now thirsty, and they come to bitter water. They begin now to murmur again. You brought us out here to die of thirst. Moses, this would have been better for us because we had water when we was down in Egypt. Listen to them murmuring and complaining about the bitter water. So God tells Moses to cut down a tree and cause the bitter water to turn sweet so they'll be able to drink. Here it is. They're still, they're still complaining. We move. God now calls them. They're now traveling. Now they're hungry. And God sent manna to fall from heaven because why they're complaining saying, Moses, you brought us out here to die. There was food 
back in Egypt. Look, look, look at these folk. They're saying it was food. Uh, forget about the taskmaster. Forget about, amen, uh, 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 all of the brutality that they were under. They said at least we had something to eat while we were in Egypt. Murmuring and complaining. We moved to chapter 17. They're still wandering around in the wilderness, but they're now they're thirsty again. Murmuring and complaining. Moses, you brought us out here to die of thirst. Uh, have you ever wondered that there are people who see God move after move after move, but still they have no faith? By now, everybody in this company ought to have faith, not only in the word of God, but faith in the man of God. Because you can't have faith in God and not have faith in the man of God because God not talking to you. God is only talking to the man of God. At the man of God's hand, God calls the waters to part and you walk through on dry shot. At the, man, at the mouth of the man of God, God calls the bitter waters to become sweet. At the man of God where God allowed a man not only, a, a, my, God not only prepared you water, but God prepared you food at the hand of the man of God and brothers and sisters I don't know about saint people but I know at welcome I had to tell them you got to stop lying saying you're going to trust God and not trust me because my bible tell me he spoke to uh, the prophets he used the priest the intercess he used the pro he used the, uh, the apostles amen to preach and teach and he used the pastor as the shepherd and so God is using me so you can't say you don't believe in what I say, but you're going to believe in God. And so it is there in chapter 17. And now they find themselves being thirsty and needing water and believing at the hand of Moses. They are out here in the wilderness to die. After God bring about this great miracle, he said, Moses, get the elders. And bring them. He said, I want you to smoke the rock and cause water to run out. And the, Moses did this in the sight of all Israel. And they saw the power of God that at the hand of Moses, water comes out. And now this water has now quenched their thirst. And they begin to say, is God among us? Have not you seen all these miracles that God has wrought? By the hand of God, and you say, Is God among us? Pause with me, brothers and sisters, as I parenthetically rewind the tape. When God sent them out of Egyptian captivity, God already knowing the proclivities of these people, He said, Moses, I'm gonna take you around the long way because they're not ready to face the Philistines. They're not ready. He said, lest they go out and fight the Philistines, then they turn back around and retreat back to Egypt. And so God said, I'm going to take them the long way, but I'm going to take them the protective way. And brothers and sisters, that's what you need to know when you got a man of God. There might be some ideas that you may want that might be better, might be shorter, but you don't know that God had to take you the long way because he already spoken to the man of God and said, they're not ready for that yet. And so he is now. He come through all these situations that now a memelic and the Amalekites want to go to war against the people of God. Look at your neighbor and say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. <laughs> this reminds me of how the church is. There's always something going on. The Bible says that he tells Aaron, I'm in the text, he says, tell, he tells Joshua, get some men of war and go down and fight with a memory. He goes down, he fight with a memory, and he said, I'm gonna stand on the hilltop with the rod of God in my hand. The Bible says that at four things I'm gonna tell you and get out the way. Number one, we see the high hill. We see the high hill in verse 10 that Moses go on the high hill, and sometimes the pastor gotta go up on a high hill. 
Sometimes the pastor, yeah, he got to be in the valley, but sometimes he go to a, he got to go to a high place because the Bible said Jesus was all time going to the mountains where he can pray because you need to be able to see what's going on down in the valley. Amen. Sometimes you got to find you a secret place so you can get into the presence of the Lord. That's why I tell the members, I can't be caught up in a whole lot of foolishness because guess what? While I'm on my knees in intercession for the people, God can reveal to me every hater, every liar every backstabber every ditch digger God will be able to reveal to me in the spirit that I don't really need nobody coming telling me who's plotting against me because I do believe in the power of the Holy Ghost and, and when you get in your secret prayer God will start revealing you all the haters all the liar all the ditch digger all the swindlers all the liar you just go down on your knees and get prostrate before the Lord I dare you God will start showing you every liar every hater every ditch digger every person that is smiling your face all the while they trying to take your place there ain't nothing but backstabbers God will show it to you Moses go on a high hill so he can be in the presence of God so he can see what's going on. But the Bible says not only does he goes on the high hill, he tells Joshua to stay down in the valley and fight. There's a high hill, but number two, there are high hands. The Bible says that right there in verse 11, as Moses held up his hand, that they won the fight. They, they, amen. They was victorious over the Amalekites said, while Moses' hands were lifted up, they, they will win in the battle. And brothers and sisters, if you hold up Pastor Brooks' hand, y'all win the battle of drugs in Perrine. If you hold up the pastor's hand, you, amen, you'll win in this social justice issue. If you hold up the man of God hand, we'll stop the black on black crime. If you hold up the man of God hand, there'll be nobody in St. Pete that's living, amen, on the margin level of poverty. If you hold up the the man of God hand your marriage will get men together if you hold up the man of God hand your wondering children will come back home if you hold up the man of God hand those who are sick will be healed if you hold up the man of God hand those that need deliverance from, from, amen from depression and defeat amen if you hold up his hand you'll win the battle but the Bible said not only was there's a high hill but there was high and lifted hands but the text said because of the weight of ministry, number three, there was heavy hands. The Bible said when, when, when Moses' hands got heavy and Moses lift those heavy hands and let them down, it says that uh, Israel began to be defeated. Brothers and sisters, that's what happened in the body of Christ when there's, amen, dissension, division, strife, and malice. It causes, amen, the man of God to get weak. Uh, because there are not too many people that saying, Pastor, you're doing a good job. Well, Pastor, Di, how do you know? Pastor Brooke didn't have to tell me. Amen. I've been pastoring since 1997. And I know what it is to see people sin. Amen. Their babies being dedicated. I know what it is to see people getting married. I know what it is to see people being counseled by the pastor. I, I know what it is to go to hospital after hospital when their loved ones are sick and even when their loved ones pass on. I know what it is to go, amen, when the loved one pass on and, and go down to the cemetery and say, earth to earth, ashes to dust. Uh, looking for the general resurrection at the last day. Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. Even the Spirit says uh, they rest from their labor and their works do follow them. I know what it is uh, to pay some people's bills. Uh, telephone bill, light bill. Uh, I'm not talking about what the church did. I'm talking about uh, uh, what I did out of my own pocket. Uh, and then turn around uh, and have them same people uh, question my integrity. Uh, have them same people uh, question uh, if I'm on the Lord's side. Uh, I know what it is uh, to pass the people uh, that are turn around and lie on you uh, and uh, scandalize your name. Uh, nobody praised Moses, uh, but they complained and they murmured uh, against Moses. Uh, and Moses, uh, he's not God. Uh, so Moses, uh, he got tired. Uh, he got weary uh, and he got worn. Uh, and when Moses got 
got tired, Moses' hands, they went down because as long as his hands was up, his hands was like antennas. It was intercessory for the people. Hold Pastor Brooks' hands up. If you hold his hands up, he's got a connection in the heavenlies. I hear Paul says, lifting up holy hands. I hear David says, who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. He who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He's tired, but he's in the valley on the hilltop and his hands are now heavy. I believe that Moses had the rod in one hand and that hand begin to go down and Moses switched the rod in his other hand and after a while that hand got tired and the battle was being won but now the battle they're losing the battle and I want to tell you St. Pete if you get on one accord you'll win the battles I don't care what they're doing down at Sweet Home. I don't care what they're doing at Second Baptist. I don't care what they're doing at Mar Memorial. I don't care what they're doing at the Bethel Church, North Macedonia. You got a leader right here in this set place to hold up his hands so you'll win the battle. If he's your pastor, if he's your shepherd, but you stop complaining, stop criticizing, but you learn how to lift him up. How do you lift him up? Pray, pray. When you don't understand, pray about it. When you don't know what he's doing, pray about it. Stop getting on the telephone and calling private meetings. But get on the phone, do a conference call, have a prayer meeting. Cause just a little talk with Jesus I make everything all right. Well, they're losing a battle. They're losing the battle cause a man of God hands are down. Bring me my rod. Where is my rod? Come on, Deacon Cooper. I need my rod. The people, they're dying. They're dying in Paran cause a man of God hands are down. The man of God has the rod in his hand, but they're dying, they're losing. Marriage are failing, children are on drugs, children are trying to be dope dealers because the man of God, hands are down. But I'm glad, I'm glad there was a high heel. I'm glad there were high hands. I'm glad there were heavy hands. Wow, the man of God had the rod in his hand. Perrine got the victory while the man of God had the rod in his hand. Marriage are being mended cause no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. There's no more black on black crime because his hands are lifted high. There's no more poverty in Perrine cause his hands are down but his hands are heavy and now 
keep bringing him down. His hands are heavy. And now he's dropped the rod. It's down. But I'm glad. I said I'm glad that number four, there was some helping hands. Can the church say helping hands? Come here, her. Come here, her. Who is her? Well, it's said that her is Caleb's son. Well, her and Aaron. Who is Aaron? Aaron is Moses' brother. He's a he's a priest, and the Bible says that her and Aaron came and lifted up the arms of Moses as they lifted his hands up Israel began to get the victory but because of the weight of the glory of God that's on the man of God her and Aaron couldn't hold up the glory and the anointing that's on the man of God they put a stone and said sit down the glory is too heavy we see pastor that the glory is too heavy we can't weigh the glory and weigh you up sit down and we'll support your hand I got the priest who's an intercessor I got the trustee who is a trusted companion of Moses they're holding his hands up and we're getting the victory tell the Lord yes tell him yes if you hold his hands up you'll make it if you hold his hands up you'll get the victory say yes say yes if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves pray 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 and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways i'll hear from heaven i'll forgive your sins i'll heal the hand but hold 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 a man of God hands up because of the glory because of the anointing they had to sit it down two strong men they could not hold the glory and the weight of the anointing they had to sit him down and lift up his hand one on each side the right and the left lift his hands up that's encouraging your man of God encourage him through prayer tell him pastor you're doing a great job don't let a year go by we're human if you can tell me what you don't like can you tell me what you do like if you tell me what you're mad at can you tell me what I've done that make you happy we're human Bible say all the gifting and anointing that was on Moses he was one of the most he's the most meekest man in the Bible you don't know what we go through we got to lift you up while sometimes our families are in turmoil we got to encourage you when there's sickness in our own family And we do this because we love the church. We love the ministry. But the sleepless nights, the toiling and the tears that's put in for the ministry. If any place that we should get encouragement is from the people that we're serving. If he can come to the aid when you need him at night, leave his family leave the bed of his wife come to a hospital come to a prison come to bail you out whatever it is pray with you because you can't sleep at night 
bless his holy name the least you can do is pray for him the least you can do is encourage him I, I discovered before I was a pastor I was a lay person I know what it is to pray for my pastor support my pastor because guess what I, it's not for me to understand everything God is saying I told my church if it if you needed faith then you will if you can see it you don't need faith Hebrews 11 said now faith is the sum of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen if I can see it I don't need faith I got evidence faith is for the things you cannot see and for the things you cannot understand hold his hand up in prayer when you hold his hands up I'm so transparent yes me and my wife we fuss you can't be in no relationship and don't have disagreements and fuss amen, amen. Frankie Beverly May say joy and pain sunshine and rain and Betty Wright said no pain no gain amen and that helps us grow but I need the church to pray for me I want you to pray for my friend if you pray for him whatever he's not doing that you want if it's God's will God gonna put in his spirit if you can say God showed you come on use your brain can't God use him he's been using him in so many areas of your life trust him now we have the word of God the Bible says, for our example every victory that God brought the children of Israel through they still did. the Bible say they died in the wilderness and never received the promise three things Moses did for that generation he gave messages miracles and manna and they still didn't believe until they all died and God gave him Joshua in the Joshua generation Joshua said I ain't giving y'all no food I ain't giving you no miracles if you see it and want it you better get up and work for it it's time to work Joshua said it's time y'all seen enough miracles matter and heard enough message it's time to get up off your rusty dusty and if you can see that paint need to be on the wall. Good God Almighty, go buy some paint and paint it. If you see that need to be some toilet paper in the bathroom, by God, go buy it and put it in there. If a light bulb need to re be replaced, don't have no business meeting about a light bulb. Go down to Lowe's, go down to home, and just replace the light bulb. If you see it need to be done, just do it. I told you, I'm going to be proud I like what uh, oh, what, what, what Ray said in the movie Ray Jamie Foxx when the man turned on the lights and got his lights right for him when he wanted to sing a song I can't stop loving you he was making all the noise pandemonium trying to tell Ray to sing something different Ray is trying to step out of the box and sing I can't stop loving you I'm, I'm, I'm going to sing my country song no, I'm going to go back to my country roots they making all this noise the man began to dim the lights got quiet and Ray was able to sing his song. The choir went crazy because they heard Ray sing a country song. Ray goes in the back and the man come out. He said, why you did that? You know, he said, why, why you did that? And the man said, because it needed to be done. Amen. Ray said, Ooh, I, I like that. I like that. He said, I did it because it needed to be done. That, that's what God is saying. Stop complaining about everything. If you see it need to be done and you're able to make it happen, stop having meetings about menial things. And begin to make it happen because it need to be happened. I told my people, you want to be leaders? A lot of mess should never come to me as the pastor. Can, can I just miss? I'm getting out your way. You're, you're a deacon, you're a trustee, you're an associate minister. There's some stuff you need to block from the man of God. You're not, I tell them at welcome, you're not here. I, I don't need you to, to, to 
do devotion. I need you to help me visit the sick. I need you to help me pray for these families. Come with me when I'm doing evangelistic work and mission work. Why as the pastor, I'm there, but my deacon's not there. We're the serve. If I can serve, then my God, you can serve too. I told my deacons just last week, I'm tired of my deacons giving $5 for the month. You want a high seat, but you want to pay low. The devil is a liar. With this position come responsibility. It come responsibility with your time, talent, and your treasures. It's commitment. Hold up his hand. And you will win the victory. That's all God told me to tell you. Come on, give the Lord. Give God a hand of praise. Give God a hand of praise. Hold up his hands. Hold up his hands. If you hold up his hands. You will get the victory. We give God praise.